It's the year of 2014, and the North Western Railway, based on the island of Sodor, which is between the Isle of Man and Great Britain, is perhaps one of the most iconic one of its type in the world, thanks to the Reverend Robert Fear Audrey, who visited the island and wrote a series of books from 1945 and the later TV show about them by the hand of Britt Allcroft and David Mitten, making the locomotives of that railway become famous. The North Western Railway was a grouping company of three previous lines, the Tidmouth, Knapford and Ellsbridge Light Railway, at the southwest of the island and built in 1885. The Wellsworth and Sudbury Railway, reaching Brendam from Crosby and operated since 1870, and the Sodor and Mayland Railway, opened in 1853 and who was thought as an ambitious project to link Sudbury with Barrow in Furness, but ended up having trains from Kirkronan to Balahu due to many setbacks. The last one was recorded as the first railway of the island, or at least that's what Audrey researched, but Sodor has many mysteries that are still hidden from nearly everyone, even the engines that work there. <laughs> But let's get back to the main subject. Since 1915, the railway extended all over the island and improved the rail service by using faster trains and carrying more goods. And although there were a few recorded accidents that caused confusion and delay, passengers and freight always arrived to their destinations. Also, the NWR is a steam sanctuary where the golden age of steam is still alive. Here you can see two engines struggling to take a heavy train up Gordon's Hill to a small steam tram with a pair of Victorian era coaches. This year, as in 2015, it will be the 100th anniversary of the railway. All the engines that appeared in Audrey's books are out of the island in a worldwide tour, visiting different countries and meeting lots of fans. Meanwhile, as their director, Sir Stephen Topham Hatt, also known as the Fat Controller, is away with his engines, he put in charge of the NWR his chief locomotive superintendent, Archibald I. Brunel. Distant relative of the famous civil engineer, who is having some trouble getting the trains running due to the lack of engines. This schedule, not only taking trains, but shunting is making me grow really tired. Now I have to shunt a whole freight train from the docks and take it to Wellsworth. I can't even take a rest at the water tower. Indeed, we need another engine to do the shunting. I know Rosie is at Vickerstown, but what about the diesels like Dennis or Sydney? As far as I know, Norman's on the Little Western. Dennis is at Kildane, and Sydney is up at Farquhar. Yeah, Samson's on Edwards branch line in freight duty, uh, Paxton's at Wellsworth, and the rest are in other shunting yards and stations. Father, why did they leave Napper without a station pilot? Don't ask me. After this express, I have to pull a heavy goods train before shunting another one for Murdoch. Even he told me he's tired of all the goods trains up and down the main line. Oh dear. Looks like we need not only one, but two engines. Mr. Brunel has borrowed an engine from the mainland to help us. I hope they get here soon. I can't keep up at this pace. Oh, I have to go. See you later. Bye, Rebecca. Bye, Rebecca. In 
Indeed, Mr. Brunel asked the steelworks company near Bridlington if they could borrow Hurricane to help with the goods work and shunting duties. Hurricane was part of the Great Eastern Railway's A55 class, an experimental engine which ended up being an industrial one after being sold to his actual owner, who transformed him from being a 010 decapod engine to a 064 to allow him to take sharper curves. <laughs> It was night by the time he reached Vickerstown. A thick fog started to appear. I hope this is the way to Knapford. I ought to be there as soon as possible. Just outside the station, in the Vickerstown yard, there's a switch that leads from the main line to the tunnel, which no engine takes except Arry and Bert. This time, expecting these two, a new signalman set the points to this line, making Hurricane go on the wrong track. Well, looks like this is a shunting yard, but not from a station. Maybe it's a bit further down the line. <laughs> what was that? I need to get off from here. It doesn't seem to be a place for rangers like me. Indeed. Whose steam engines aren't allowed to be here except to be scrapped? But, but, I'm not here to be scrapped. I need to find my way to Knapford. That's not my business, so go away before the boss comes around. He doesn't like steam, he's like you. Hello there, Splodge. Wait, where's the other? Actually, this is Dodge, and Splat is away at the diesel works to be mended. Bah! Always looking for an excuse to reach Bickerstown. We got plenty of work here, and he's going away because of a broken barber beam. Your flaw caused that accident. If you were to be more cautious, however... Don't tell me what to do, you little... <laughs> Wait. Do I smell like a steam spirit? A coffee pot is around here. No, it's sent those, those rusty engines on the sidings. <laughs> I've been smelling that pong all day. It's, 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 very it's very bad. It's very bad. I swear there's a tin kettle around here. But well, it won't reach far from here. If the ghost of the mine doesn't get it, I will. <laughs> So I will be at my shed. Anything you see, give me a hunk. But, 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 but you said we had a lot more work to do here. 
You should hurry up then. Did you say something? No boss. Meanwhile, Hurricane was chuffing down the old branch line. The grass was very thick and the rails were very rusty. The line looked like no train had run on it for many years. Definitely got lost. This place is even scarier than the other place. I hope it's not haunted. <coughs> no, no, no. It can't be. Ghosts don't exist. Ghost, then do Ghost? I'm not ghost, I'm Neil. But, but, but you look antique and dusty. Thanks for the compliments. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Can we start again? My name is Hurricane, you know. Like the storm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so tell me. What are you doing here? I thought engines don't come here because they say this place is haunted. Well, I was on my way to Nafford, but I got lost. Do you know the way? Well, I, I am a bit old and my memory is not like it used to be, but let's see if I can get you there. Thank you very much, chap. First, make your way to the turntable. It's at the station. You don't want to go backwards all the way, do you? Oh no, those damn diesels have scrapped this poor engine. I'm sorry to say they don't. A few years before a diesel came here, but I scared him so much he never got back. My driver and fireman used those engine parts to fix me. As while I've been here, I didn't have a proper workshop to make the parts I needed.
Oh no. Another diesel. And it's even larger than the other one I met. Wait. I know that engine. He's the one I scared long ago. Wait and see. Oh no. I know that whistle. It can't be. Hello, Beehive on Wheels. I'm the Grim Messenger of Doom, the one who has come to take you. No! Get away from me! <laughs> Let's go on, Mr. Hurricane. All clear ahead. Good trick. Um, uh, Neil, right? Yep, that's my name. Do you know what place this is? Oh, it's Ifrimbra. It's quite a disturbing view, isn't it? Yes, especially with all those edges falling apart. Why aren't they there? Why aren't they repaired? Uh, it's not a very pleasant talking subject. Go ahead. I nearly melted my wheels during accidents at the steelworks where I work, so go on. I'm prepared for anything. Like seeing a ghost. <laughs> that was different. Please do tell me. Uh, all right. Don't say I didn't warn you, though. That's Ifrimber Scrapyard, where they take engines like us to their final destination, like an elephant cemetery. That's horrible. How on earth can an engine be scrapped? Sometimes it's not its choice, but their owners won. As they want to gain some extra money, other times it's because they cannot repair the damage done to the engine. Many years ago, my first railway went bankrupt, and my owners scrapped the other two who worked alongside me. I was about to follow them, but I begged not to be scrapped. So my driver and fireman gathered their savings and bought me, just when I was about to be taken for the last firing. After being bought, I stayed in the sheds at Crovin's Gate. There my owners got excited news for me. The Breathdale and Ifrimber Railway was looking for a new engine. by road in a long cart. It was a bit of a scary journey, as there were many cliffs and narrow paths. Once again I began to work alongside a small red engine called Lady, and later with a tender engine called Duggled. All good fellows. That was until the diesels came in. Then I was appointed to the Breathdale Colliery. I worked there shunting coal trucks first, and then oil tankers, but the mine closed down and the oil company went bankrupt. So I was left here. But even though that section of the railway was closed thanks to the Beeching Act, I had been lucky to have my former driver and fireman been taking care of me. Lucky you, but I have a question. When does that last firing meet? The last firing is when an engine is going to die. They fill its boiler with a chemical liquid called black water, making the engine fall into an endless sleep, make, making no pain for an engine while being cut down. Before applying this method, the engines were scrapped alive, giving them a painful death. Uh, I don't want to be scrapped. Don't be afraid, Mr. Hurricane. Once the moment comes, you will decide. Meanwhile... Enjoy every inch of track you travel on, even if it's a bumpy one like this. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Neil. Pay attention to what we oldies have to say. 
we have the experience you young engines need to be really useful. How much time have you spent on Sodor? I have right this evening. You should go and see the director of the railway. Mr. Topham Hatt was the main director back in the days when the Northwestern Railway was formed. But that was ages ago, because I saw my owner's sons grow and take their, their place on my footplate. And then their grandchildren. Around six generations has passed by in front of my eyes. You know, Mr. Hurricane, being immortal is a curse, as you see many of your friends passing away, yet you stay there watching. Everything as time goes by. But well, at least I try to reward their friendship by letting them play with my levers and gauges. Inspect me and trying not to break down. This part was quite difficult, as they got me some parts that needed adjustments. But I didn't care, and kept and kept puffing and chugging along those old tracks for joy of their relatives and friends. They had picnics there, and used my boiler water for making tea, and their shovel as a pan to cook some bacon and eggs. I loved that smell. Yes, those were the days, Mr. Hurricane. I wish someone would love me that much. I was a failed experimental engine, which was sold to a steelworks company. They even broke my coupling rods to work at those sharp ends. They kept me working all day, from sunrise to sunset. No, you haven't. You haven't failed, Mr. Hurricane. If that was the case, we won't be here chatting. In fact, your owner improved your design to be really useful. You may not be fast, but you look very strong, which makes it perfect for heavy work like the steel industry has. Well, at least I'm here to see some other places instead of the submit of the slag siding. Oh, then I'm sure you will love the views. Sodor's a splendid land. They kept puffing and puffing until they reached Knapford Station, where Mr. Brunel was waiting. Ah! Hurricane, right? Yes, sir. I got a bit lost, but thanks to him, I've arrived safe and sound. Well, I'm glad you've reached Napford safely, and, uh, who is this? Wait a minute. I know this engine, it's... Neil, sir, at your service. Of course! How could I ever forget? And my family took care of you and the rest of the steamies at the Briffale and Vickerstown Railway. I remember you being at my father's works in Coldy Braid. You even got yourself into one of Audrey's books. Uh, talking about the day you delivered Scarlurry to his railway. Anyway, I, I thought you were scrapped after the closure of the Briffale section. Neil told Mr. Brunel all about his life after the closure of the part of the railway he used to work on. Oh, my, Neil. I will contact your owners to let them know that I want to buy you, and, if they accept my offer, they will be your own driver and fireman bringing you free part of the railway again as my private engine. But first, I will send you tomorrow morning to the steamworks for a proper examination, and, if necessary, give you a well-deserved overhaul. Will you, sir? Thank you very much. I beg your pardon, sir, but are you the new director of the railway? No, I'm just Sir Stephen Topham's substitute while he's away. Uh, my name is Archibald Brunel. I worked for the North Western Railway as its locomotive superintendent, which means I'm in charge of the engines and their maintenance, etc. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Brunel. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Brunel. Well, now it's late. So make yourselves to the sheds. You must take the right line, and you're there. And, um, welcome to Sodor. Neil, you can follow him and stay there until tomorrow while I arrange the bureaucracy. Good night to the both of you. Goodbye, Mr. Brunel. Goodbye, Mr. Brunel. Well, looks like we will feel like at home. Indeed. I hope I'm here for long. It's like heaven. It's so dark.